Hello, hello, hello. It's hot and I'm tired. Uh, well, they say I'm not supposed to say I'm tired, but hey, I'm hanging in there. Woo, Lord Jesus. God bless you. God keep you. I pray that you receive the desires of your heart. Uh, with that being said, I was thinking, because I'm always thinking. Uh, here's a little bit of uh, what I'm going through. Hello, can you go? Can you go to the folk floor? Yeah, the reason why I'm playing this is it was talking about how low can you go, and I was thinking, I was like, how low can you go? Uh, well, I don't have the phone. My daughter gave me like a little basic phone, but my phone's off, and now uh, I had to let the internet go, which I tell them they go into your account so fast and want to take it out before the uh, round the first and stuff. It's when it's 30 days. They want to jump in thinking they're not going to get their money, which I don't blame. So I no longer have my uh, my web page, website. But that's all good. I know I will just be glad when victory arrives. That's all I'm waiting for is victory to arrive. That is hot. That's hot. I was on Facebook. And uh, I'm on Mama's page, man. I, I, I kind of like, I really don't like being on, I think Facebook, don't get me wrong, social media is fantastic. It's beautiful, especially for people that's lonely, uh, people that um, love to stay in contact with their family and stuff. It's good for that. I use it. I don't use it for that. I use it to reach the public and to tell people about Jesus. Uh, sometimes I check in on my family. Other than that, you know, that's not it, my, my intentions. But when I'm on there, you know, you get to scanning through and you get to seeing people fighting and people recording, people fighting. And I mean, dead babies and police beating up people. And I'm like, I, I get overwhelmed. I don't know about anybody else, but I get overwhelmed with the violence and it just frustrates me. You know, sometimes I'm angry at the person that's standing around filming it. That's what bothers me often. Four-year-old getting beat. I just block it on my page because I, I'm not going to comment on it. You know, one incident with the little girl got beat. I did comment on that one because I'm like, who? You, all the people on there, oh, yeah, you know, I would beat the parents. I would go to jail. Now, what needed to be done was who was filming. That's the person that should have been arrested. I should have broke it up, you know. Then you deal with the children. But I don't know. Sometimes, you know, which is like. Things can get so misconstrued, and people don't think about the outcome of, of their actions. And that's what's wrong with the world today with all this violence. It's easy to pull a gun out and a knife or whatever and choke somebody and kill somebody. But people take, don't take time to think about the consequences. What if you get caught? What if you kill that person? Who's going to take care of that person's children if they have them? You know what I'm saying? Is that going to bother you? Is that going to be on your conscience? Is that something that you can live with? I mean, and then are you killing a person for what? Because they want to be with somebody else? They don't, they, they no longer want to be with you? Man, you know, like I said, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff uh, that I think, uh, I think the way the page is set up, you know, my pages are set up, I try to go toward people that's talking positive. And, um, uh, a lady sent me a clip today. Oh my God, it was awesome. I was trying to go into de uh, into uh, go deep with it, but they upgraded the website. But it was talking about Black Wall Street, and you know I I never heard of that. And so you know I'm I'm the type of person I like to learn, although I'm supposed to be school wise not that bright, but I love to learn new things, and uh, it, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Like I said, um, it was talking about black people owning towns and 
different stuff like that, but it was powerful. So things like that I really like. And then there was a guy on there talking about social media, how we no longer communicate with one another. We pull up our phones and, you know, we do a lot of things that, that distract us. What he was talking about, it, we're distracted from having social contact with one another because we're doing social media. But it was very wise, and he put it in like a little rap form, so it was beautiful. So most of all, most one, the one on there that was really extremely important was an associate principal from a school. I didn't get to catch what town it was because I'm trying to do this and that. But uh, she was talking to this uh, 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 neighborhood, some people in the neighborhood, the poor, probably the poor zip code area. And uh, someone had uh, been murdered, and uh, one of the parents, I guess, knew that she used to uh, t uh, be the principal of the school or whatever. They called her out and wanted her to help them. So she's standing there, and she's talking, and she's telling them, you know, why don't you stop killing people? Are you benefiting from the killing? I mean, it was powerful. It was beautiful that she went there. She didn't just talk about helping, but she went there to, to, to give, her, uh, give her opinion on what was going on, and I thought it was beautiful. But, you know, I would love to kick back one day and critique a lot of the things she was saying. But uh, I didn't want to, I didn't feel like doing it because, I, I, like I said, just like I'm saying to a lot of people that are on social media that's posting things, sometimes we have to think. With me, I back up and I pray before I say something, you know, especially if it's a deep comment because I don't want people to misconstrue what I'm saying, not so much that they could come back and cuss me out. If I'm saying what I really feel, think, and believe, then what you're saying to me is not going to make it or break me. But if I'm throwing something out there, then yeah, well, darn, I wish she would have took it this way. Or he would have took it that way. Well, I didn't mean it like that. Well, you know, then, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get confrontation with nobody on Facebook. Not like that. But, I mean, that's why I try to wait and I pray before I comment. But I wanted to comment on that, you know, and I will when I find it again. I would like, love to comment on that because she's really, truly trying to make a difference. And she had a, a small effect. She did have an effect. She had a, she gave them a wake up call because she told them, she said, you might as well open your balloon factory. Get your balloon business. She said, because y'all going to keep on killing and you're going to buy more balloons. I get your t-shirt business because you're going to keep on killing. I was like, wow. I mean, so she, she came home with it. She came home with it. I believe she, she touched some people. Even if she would have gotten one, it, 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 it was, it was beneficial to her being there. But, um. Uh, like I said, though, um, it is what it is. I know the heat brings a lot of violence. <laughs> I'm getting ready to go over here. I'm getting ready to turn on this fan. Turn on this fan. I just got through cutting the grass. And as I was cutting the grass, I was laughing to myself. Because I'm like, I hate grass. I cannot stand grass. But then when I'm cutting the grass, it's just like in a in Friday when he said, now I'm not saying that I don't like dogs. I love dogs and I love cats and animals. But in the movie, he said, yeah, he said, you need to go fill out that application to be a dog catcher. He said, because I hate dogs. That's why I got the job so I can just choke them. And I'm like, I'm not saying I'm choking dogs, but I'm like killing the grass. You know, I use that little metaphor to kill the grass, you know. Because I hate it when I'm cutting, it's like, ooh, it's gone, ooh, it's gone. So sometimes I don't think I have the strength, and it just comes from I don't know where. And that's what's powerful about God is when I don't have strength, he has the strength. This morning, what really is starting to pull me more into Facebook, because I've never stayed on it. Well, the, most of the time I just post my videos and I keep going. I don't get on it. But what has really been bringing me to it is now a lot of pastors have been on there. I don't know where they start coming from, but a lot of pastors starting to make their little videos and they're on there. And uh, I've been listening to the word, you know, and a lot of them are saying a lot, a lot of powerful things. But... Everybody is trying to encourage people, but it, a lot of the pastors are trying to encourage people, 
But on the other hand, there are some people, some of the pastors out there I really like, let me tell you. Well, you know, let me tell you the truth about yourself. And I, one of them, Joe Osteen, made a statement about something, talking about forgiving people and said, but remember the time when God forgave you for this or that? So you want to talk about not forgiving? And I like a comment was, ouch. And so I'm like, yeah, it's a, it's a powerful pastor down there that really care about people. And then some people get down there and, they, I mean, they just talking to be talking. You know, look at me, look at me. But um, there's going to be, there's just something that's going to happen. It's just some things that the world is changing. The world is changing. You know, the world is changing. The people are changing. I'm changing. You know, I just pray that we all wake up before, you know, I don't believe we're going to all kill each other like that. Everybody's not going to kill each other to the end of the world. We just keep killing and killing and killing. I think we're just going to need a word. And the word is going to come. We're going to get a word. We're going to get a wake-up call. But I pray we get the word before we get the wake-up call. Because you know when God gives you a wake-up call, oh, it rains on the just and the unjust. I don't care how hard you pray. You know, people say God always answers. No, God does not always answer prayers. I like what I heard somebody say one time. Sometimes he might say yes. Sometimes he might say no. And, you know, <laughs> maybe later, you know. So, yeah, there's a lot of us. Sodom and Gomorrah had a wake-up call, didn't they? In a way, Job had a, he had a wake-up call, too, and he didn't even do nothing. So, you know, it brings on the just and the unjust. So, God bless you and keep you. I pray that you get in some air, you know, some air conditioning. Enjoy your day. You know, do something that, that makes God smile. Hug your kids. Hug your children. You know, kiss a loved one. Embrace somebody today. You know. Oh, Lord. Uh, later on, I get back on here, God willing, and I'll talk to you about, uh, I went to church yesterday to another church. And uh, it was beautiful and powerful. It was a powerful sermon. But, uh. I tell you about my. I went to two different churches yesterday, and I tell you about those services. Hopefully, how I had just spoke with you. I was just talking. I don't like keep seeing you. I'm just gonna just keep it in general because I don't know if anybody's listening to me and it sounds real crazy seeing you. Anyway, Lord Jesus, <laughs> I was uh, I was just talking. I made a video, and when I made that video, I was talking about that how the enemy comes and he sends people to take and try to up. Uh, uh, play like they know you, false prophet. I am lying. I almost said, swear to God. I was just, I just made a video like yesterday. I think it was the one I made yesterday. And I was talking about that, how a chick came, but she was trying to act like she could prophesy. And I said, a guy told me, said, she didn't prophesy to you. Said, what it was that somebody had gave, given her some information about you. Why is it when I was in church yesterday at the 12 o'clock service, the, ooh, I was giving her a call. What was she? Mm. She showed up. I kid you not. She showed up and then tried to hurry up and look forward and try to say something. Lord, have mercy. I'm going to be real with you because I'm real with myself. She's going to sit there and try to say something. Uh, are you still going to such and such and such? And I just, quick answers, no. So while she was sitting there, you know, I start praying. I just sat there praying because I, I, I knew it was the enemy and I know how he does. Because for some reason at this church, People are always trying to push me out of the church. And for a minute, I thought that it was God saying, don't go to the church no more. But then I looked at it. Many times, God sent me there. So it's a reason and purpose for me to be at that church. That's why the enemy comes to chase me out. And what gets me with it, what really freaks me out, is that the people that's always chasing me out of the church are people that are not members of the church. I don't, I don't even think my membership is still in existence there. Like I said, I go to different churches, and I'm not a member of every church. But like I said, I don't know if my membership is still there because I left for a minute, and then I tried to join another church. So I'm not sure. But, yeah, she came about. But I sat there and I prayed, you know, God, be a shield, be a fence around me, remove the enemy from me. You know what I'm saying? I started praying like that. She got up and she walked out. And then she came back, and then when I was sitting there, I started noticing I start remembering the meeting that I used to, a uh, place that I used to attend. Well, let me say, I was at the library. I used to be at the library. And uh, I had little, uh, 
I was over a meeting and we would have coffee and I wanted it to be an eating meeting. Mr. Lewis, the man that was with me, said she stole the hot dog. She cussed them out and she stole the hot dogs. Well, here it is. You sitting in church. I'm going to tell you the truth. I ain't going to beat around the bush with you. I'm going to let you know what's going on. Yes, <laughs> Miss Prophesied over her. Yeah, she going to pop back. I haven't seen her in what? Probably a year. I think like wintertime I had seen her in a Goodwill. And when she was, she was in the Goodwill, she was cussing the people out. They was trying to, she was trying to take something back or something. She was arguing with the, uh, with the lady behind the counter. She was arguing with the cashier about something crazy and got real loud and outright and everything. I mean, she just totally just acted a fool. And, uh, but like I said, here it is. You stole hot dogs, some stuff that I had purchased and had taken there. You stole that and you cussed out the people at the meeting. You're going to sit there up in the church and talk about, oh, how you doing? Have you, <laughs> you know, like I said, you know, I'm a nice person, but don't, don't come to me like that. And that's why I just dismissed. And I said, if she come near me again, like I said, I will move. But if she say something to me, I will address her. I will address her. I'm not arguing and all that type of thing in church. But you don't have no business coming in my, you, you don't have nothing to say to me. You need to get that pack of hot dogs. I didn't buy a little 10 pack, 8 pack of hot dogs. It was a whole, uh, like a, she probably took like 20 some hot dogs. Because it was an eating meeting. She, he said she just picked up the whole pack and walked out, cussed them out and walked out with it. You know, so, uh-uh. Now, you know what I'm saying? Address that issue. How, how is that doing? You know, but like I said, that's, that's the thing about a lot of people. People are fought the church because of somebody else's actions in the church. And just like I'm talking about that, the same thing with the projects. I lived in the projects numerous times. But people are quick to hurry up in the news media and talk about somebody was killed there, but they fail to realize a lot of the people that are getting killed in the project, they didn't even live there. They came from somewhere else to the project. People bring a lot of things to places, but people don't look at that because they don't know. They don't know the streets like that. So they assume some things. You know, people don't know everything. I don't know everything going on, but I know a lot of people that got killed in the projects when I was up there. You know, not that I've seen the murder or nothing like that. Don't get that twisted. But a lot of times when the people died, they had left, moved away or whatever, and they came back and somebody tried to rob them or something or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Or they did something. You know, you used to have a lot of chicks want to go with somebody's man and want to come running up there to the project talking about they're going to beat somebody up. Now, you're going to leave your house and go to somebody else's house, and you're going to talk about beating them up. Come on now. So, yeah, a lot of stuff like that goes on, and the news media don't go behind the story. They're in front of the story. They're getting the end result. They don't know the beginning. So, like I said with the chick, you know, I just pray when people do, if you do decide to return to church, you know what I'm saying? I just pray that people go to church and just watch. Mama, Mama always say that, watch as well as pray. You know, God tells you that, watch. Test spirits. Like I said, I was naive at the time when she came to me, but thank God I spoke up about it. I didn't stay in silence. I could have stayed silent. I'm not going to tell nobody, you know, she was trying to tell me that I'm going to get this church and I'm going to do this or that. I stayed silent on it. Thank, I, did, I didn't stay silent on it. I opened my mouth and I spoke to somebody that was a close friend. And I spoke to a couple of people because I didn't trust something about her. Number one, she was young. Number two, she, didn't, she wasn't Pacific on the area. It was a church I was already attending. So she could have been speaking about that. So anyway, when the person told me that, I, I checked some things out. And, and as a matter of fact, she ended up having, she lied about her name. She runs around with this little fake name with a shell on it. And uh, anyway, I got on her page and I realized that she's associated with a ministry. And with this ministry, which is not bad what they do, but she's affiliated with this ministry that take, they, they, uh, that's the practice that they do. They believe in reading the scriptures, not like the prayer I read out of the book. They believe in breaking strongholds and, and ties, and, and they get deep into that uh, 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 paperwork about uh, uh, the Jezebel spirit. They do stuff like that. I've looked at some of that up before, but she, they get into that stuff right there, you know, and uh, that's what she practices. So like I said, some things can look good, but some things can be bad. Mama said, always, don't let everybody pray for you. And believe me, God revealed that to me, you know. 
But uh, like I said, those are the things I deal with, you know, daily. I deal with, I deal with stuff like that. And like I said, it, 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 I said, darn, did I speak her up? But then I remembered, like I said, I could go into some supernatural stuff with you that'll blow your mind, you know. Like I said, she can't, she didn't prophesy the whole point I'm making. There are people, you know, like I said, in my head, I be thinking all kind of stuff because you know what I'm saying, to keep from being stressed, I think about a lot of stuff, you know. When I was taking a master life class, uh, in one of the classes, uh, a man, he explained that he was a seer, that he could prophesy, and he misused his gift. And by him misusing his gift, God punished him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this was back in 2000, maybe 10, maybe, yeah, 2010, back around 2010. Yeah, to about, about 2010, and he was talking about 2010, 2011. And so then I was always kind of leery about that. But anyway, he said he could, but with her, she couldn't see nothing. What it was, somebody told her, and what it was also, excuse me, she had seen me at that church because the church that she attends is around the corner from this little church when I left this major church I, that I go back and forth to at 12. I jumped down there and joined that church. And she had, her church is around her, so she had seen me. And that's the point. Watch and test people. You know, if you really can prophesy, you know what I'm saying, uh, what do Jesus look like? If you really can prophesy and you can see the future and you got a gift, you a seer, then tell me what I'm thinking. You know what I'm saying? Tell me that. Tell me what are such and such in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Test the person. Test them. And if they can't answer and they come up with some hard war stuff where, you know, I got to wait, I got to pray about it, you know what I'm saying? It takes me 48 hours and all that type of thing. You just tell them, well, I tell you what, you go on and you think about that. And in the meantime, don't come back around me no more. Don't come back around me because I think that you're a liar. I'm learning that some things you have to call people out. Because if you don't call people out, they'll continue to mess with you. I'm going to say it wrong, wrong. <laughs> But yeah, people will continue to pick with you. Because the devil, he don't want you to get close to God. Whether you going to church or not, he don't want you going. He don't want you getting close to God. And I can use a, a different scenario. Think about it. You and your family. This happened in my life too. You and your family. Everybody's getting along. Either it's you and your kids, your single mother, are you married, your boyfriend, or however. You in a relationship and everything's going good. Oh wow, everything. And all of a sudden. I mean, you just happy as a lark. Everybody's happy. The kids happy. I got food. Everything y'all needs and wants are met. All of a sudden, either you get a telephone call, you get a text, or you get a knock on the door, and here comes somebody talking about she's pregnant by your man. Mm. Or somebody did this or somebody did that. Or they suing you and all this type of thing. Later on, once you, you know, first you get over the shock, like first you're like, oh my God, nah, whatever, you know what I'm saying? You're arguing your temper, like, you know, you you just totally out of the happiness thing. Then later on, some days later, months later, you realize it was a lie. What was that? That was the devil. He came to steal your joy. That's what he does. He comes to steal your joy. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And like you said, it's not always the devil. You got evil people. You got jealousy. A lot of women go around saying they pregnant. And they're not pregnant because they just want to ruin your relationship. They want a man back. I was having a discussion with my cousin. And, uh, you know, I'm like putting people business out there. But I'm trying to make a point. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, him and his, uh, his, his lady, you know what I'm saying, they separated. And like I was trying to tell him, years of experience, honey. Yeah, you separated. But as soon as you blow up with what you're trying to do with your dream, your dream blows up. I you meet you another boo. Hello. She will return. She will come back. And she's not going to always come back smiling. She's going to come back with a vengeance. You know, I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it numerous times. I've seen it. You know, just be prepared. Be prayed up. Be God up. <laughs> you know. Mm. Cause don't nobody want you happy. Don't nobody want you happy. People will kick you out. And I'm talking to men too. Women will kick men out. 
and turn around and think, oh, yeah, like, well, like I said, man, women, men will get rid of women, vice versa. You know what I'm talking about. You get rid of them. And then you want to, ah, well, they weren't doing nothing. They weren't working. They weren't doing nothing. They just want to sit around the house all day. Yeah, all they did was they just babysat the kids. That's all they did. You know what I'm saying? They couldn't keep a job. That's all they did. Talking about the woman. Talking about the man. Yeah. They ain't about nothing. All, all, what you don't do for me, I get somebody else. I don't care nothing about you. I'm moving on. I'm going to find me somebody else. Yeah. Go ahead. But remember this. What you don't want, the next chick will. You throw them on out there. <laughs> <laughs> Go back old school. Joe Tech said it. Said you might not want her because she got them skinny legs. He said, but another man will come and take her skinny legs and out. <laughs> so yeah, don't always get it twisted. If you're getting rid of somebody and you think you're really tossing them away, sometimes they really tossing you, and sometimes it's a blessing that they're getting away from you. Mm -hmm. Be careful. Make sure that it's really over. Make sure that it's over. Make sure, believe me, make sure, because uh, I've been there and done that. Been on both ends for real. But mainly, mm, was in a relationship. Oh, I'm telling out myself, but anyway, been or done that. God bless you, God keep you. I'm going to get out of here. Ooh, I almost dropped this. <laughs> I'm going to get out of here and find something to do. Go meditate a little more. And um, like I said, all we can do is take one step in, at a time. Just take one step. God, order my steps, you know. Uh, there's a lot of events in Louisville that's coming up. Please, please, when I did have the website, the main thing I was doing is trying to keep people up to date, parents up to date with these places that give out toys. I, don't Please don't come to me talking about but why you asking for a handout. Please, nobody ever come to me. I go to, I shop at the Goodwill. Mama said, I don't turn down nothing but my collar, and that's not out. <laughs> and I'm like that. You get free clothes of anybody out there. Oh, I keep saying, whatever. If anyone, a uh, uh, community, anybody has a house, has a, 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 a building, you know, they no longer want uh, or something that could be foreclosed, and they only have a, some small payments that could be made on it. Please, here I am. Give it to me so I can make it a church, a place to gather, a place to have an address so I can take and have my set up my ministry. So if you have a building that you no longer want, you want to give away, you know, you want to give it to me free or you want to sell it to me for a dollar, you know, here I am, here I am, you know, here I am. You know, my email is vigilantes, V-I-L-A-N-T-T-E-S-F-O-R-J-E-S-U-S-I-N-C at gmail.com. Please write me. Donate me a building. Give me a building. I would love it. Until I get on my feet and then I can pay some rent. I buy it from you for a couple of hundred or something, you know. But, uh... God bless you. Have a wonderful, marvelous rest of the day. See ya. Yeah.